Hello. We all carry tools. Many of us like to carry a little toolbox in our pocket. For instance, something like a Leatherman or a Swiss Army knife. But what's the number one rule about what you want to carry with you in your toolbox? The number one rule is to carry a rule. Er. Uh, you always want to have some means of measuring distances. For instance, a tape measure. We obviously don't like carrying around this bulk, though. So, wouldn't it be nice if you had some way to measure distances on your multi-tool? Well, some, for instance, this Leatherman, this uh, Victorinox, if I can find the tool here, here it is. It has a very small, hard-to-read, primitive ruler, but it's uh, only good for three inches, which is not very big. Some are even worse. Here's a little 58 millimeter model from my keychain, and this could only measure one inch. So if you're measuring something really tiny, like a coin, you know, maybe this would be useful, but if you're measuring anything longer than an inch, you're in trouble. So wouldn't it be nice to carry some way to measure distances all the time on your pocket tool kit? Well, that's what this video is about. So I just went through the calibration setting, and let's see how well this can measure my aluminum high-quality yardstick, a one-foot length of it. Put the zero mark there, and the 12-inch mark we're going to put right here. And it says that's 11 inches, so completely worthless. So I read about this trick online from a guy whose name is Victor Inox, which is Victor Inox, but he made it into a first and last name, kind of clever. Uh, and his idea, I saw it on the Instructable site, was to print out on paper a ruler. So for instance, on this Cybertool Lite, which I bought used online, I have printed out a ruler. And there are different ways to sort of put this onto your Swiss Army knife, we'll talk about that in a bit. If you fasten the bottom of it to the cyber tool, it takes a while to dispense it. But here you go. You've got a ruler, and then it kind of coils up and can be put back onto your Victorinox pretty quickly. You just tighten it, and then close it. So that would be one way to carry a uh, paper ruler. Another method, there's another smaller cyber tool, is to carry it here, right next to the uh, key, the uh, cyber tool bit kit. However, you have to remove the bits, so no one wants to do that. But here's a little teeny. A little teeny one foot long ruler and as you see here I've made these by printing them out on my printer so they're effectively free from a site called ruleronline.net and this is just a little cut length of uh, drinking straw this one is a little bit different this one has the ruler folded, which is what his idea was. He didn't seem to think of rolling it up, but maybe he doesn't have a cyber tool. And so what you can do is you can take one and fold it up. You might be able to fit even longer than a foot. Uh, however, you then have to, if you're printing it out on your printer, you have to tape things together. But here's a nice little uh, inch ruler. And what I do is I redden the ends to remind me that you don't measure all the way to the end there. The zero starts a little bit inward. Uh, so that's another method. Here's another cyber tool, a larger one. And how are we going to dispense this one? So 
and this one's also taped to it. You may not want to tape it to the ruler, but if you do, it then curls back up kind of nicely and quickly. You just wrap it around like that, you then tighten it. And then close it. Like so. A few other things I thought to point out. I recommend buying one of these paper trimmers. It makes cutting these much quicker and easier. I also, for instance, cut out this uh, survival manual. You can download this for free from DougRitter.com. Uh, you can fold it up into a nice little survival guide. I've shown this in other videos. You can use waterproof paper. That's kind of nice, but it'll make it much thicker. Uh, you can fold this up, throw it in your wallet. I wanted to see if I could condense it, put it into a roll uh, to store on the knife so you have a survival guide built into your Swiss Army knife. Unfortunately, my printer doesn't seem up to the task. Its uh, resolution isn't high enough. I also wanted to point out that I recommend building protective sleeves for these things. I sometimes call these squash clamps. The way you condense these is you pull on them like that. Uh, and you can get these into a nice tight cylinder. They make a great sound as you do this. So once you get it into a nice tight cylinder, you then can throw it into your protective sleeve and that protects it from grime, moisture. Uh, I recommend also putting clear tape on these rulers, but you can't do it over the full length, at least if you want to fit a full 12 inch, 30 centimeter ruler on your knife, because it just makes it too thick. So you'd either have to cut down its length or just put the protective tape on this outer part. And the paper that you keep on your knife, of course, can be used for other things. You could print out on the other side. As I mentioned, the uh, survival guide, maybe, if you can find one small enough. First aid guide, Ten Commandments, U.S. Constitution. Uh, you can use it as fuel for your fire. Paper is, of course, a great thing to start fires with. You can use it as note paper. A lot of Swiss Army knives these days have a, uh, a pen. Uh, so that you can take notes on that piece of paper. Uh, so it has a lot of applications besides just being a ruler. So I've made a bunch of prototypes of these things, and I've come to a bunch of realizations, and I keep making better and better ones. <clears throat> I'll tell you the first big realization I came to. It reminded me of my uh, survival bracelet, my one-minute paracord survival bracelet, which can make in literal, literally 60 seconds and deploy it in only five. I have videos proving that. Uh, when you make it, you want to make it with 10 feet because that's a nice quantity of paracord that we all like to work with. Uh, but it's just too much, it, it, at least for my size wrist, it depends on your wrist. Uh, but 10 feet is really pushing it. It crams it on, it causes bulges, little, uh, what do you call it, almost like hernias. Uh, and it becomes so much nicer if you just bite the bullet and reduce your cordage down to maybe about eight feet in my case. Uh, again, it depends on what size wrist and how loose you want it to be. Uh, so bite the bullet and accept that you're not going to be able to fit that useful quantity. What's the useful quantity in these things? 12 inches, which again is kind of just an arbitrary length because that's what we make uh, rulers out of typically. 12 inches, about 30 centimeters. However, <clears throat> I found two, I conquered two problems, three, three problems. If you make these 12 inch, they barely fit onto these designs, and you have to use only minimal amounts of tape uh, to reinforce the ends. I didn't like that either. Uh, also, the ones that I found online, they're kind of fat. You really don't need this ruler to be this wide. Uh, you know, the actual tape measure for a little micro product should be very thin, something more like this. 
So it was too wide, it was too long, and finally, notice that the zero mark for the centimeters for the metric is here, but the other side, this is 12 inches down here. So what you have to do is fully deploy the entire ruler and then flip it around to use it. And I thought, is that how all rulers are? That I find that inconvenient. So I looked around and I found out, no, that's not how all of them are. Here's, for example, a little six inch guy. Uh, and its zero mark is right here. But then you flip it this way and now your zero mark for metric is at the same end. I thought, yeah, that's what I want. I want my zero marks to be aligned. I don't want zero here and zero here. I want both metric and imperial zeros to be at the same end. So digging into it, I found a different company that prints out uh, rulers. This one, Vendian, which is actually the one I used in my original video from I think 2014 or so when I was showing those flat packs. And they solve so much, so many of these issues. Number one, it's much skinnier width. Number two, the zero mark is the same for both metric and imperial. See, I'm not sure if you're able to see this in the video. Uh, the zero mark is the same for both metric and imperial. It starts at the same edge. The width is smaller. Also, look how many you get on one page. Uh, so rather than just one strip in the middle to make it 12 inch, this gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rulers all on one page, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I've converted to this one, vendian.org. I'll provide the link. And let me show you what uh, I've come up with using these much nicer rulers. So I think this one was the first prototype. Uh, oh, a fourth thing. Uh, when you cram on 12 inches, you have to sort of guide it on slowly and take it off slowly, uh, which I didn't like. It also, I d originally didn't have a, a protective outer sheath. You see this little, little orange straw cut? Uh, so that these just unraveled as soon as you let go, which, which I didn't like. Uh, so here, this is the first one using this nice smaller, uh, smaller paper rulers. Well, the other things I showed you are pretty much the same, though. You still unravel it kind of the same way. I also typically no longer pre-roll these around a Q-tip swab. I just roll them right around the uh, right around the cyber tool itself. So this one, as you see, is about 10 inches long, just shy of 10 inches. Uh, but boy, is it so much easier to deal with. So that was one prototype. That was the first, I guess that was prototype number three. Then the thing I thought to point out is you may just want to tape your tape measure uh, to the outside of your uh, product. Here's one example. Let me uh, zoom in a bit. Hold on. So this one is using one of the new skinny rulers that you can get at vendian.com. I printed one for the outside of this Swiss Army knife and just applied it with clear tape and then cut it precisely with my Mac 2 razor knife to make a nice clean, clean look. Here's what it looks like on a cell phone. Uh, this is my iPhone X, iPhone 10, and I just have it uh, running along the length there. Uh, I knew there was a good reason for me to buy this clear case for my iPhone, <laughs> and it's so that someday I could mount a ruler on the inside. Uh, so you can mount it there. I also printed a little one for my little keychain Swiss Army knife, because he was jealous that he didn't get a paper clip and a tape measure, so I made one for him too. And then finally, here is my working production model. Uh, this is what I recommend everyone emulate, actually. I'm not MBM, by the way. I buy these used on eBay, so they come with all sorts of other people's names. It has this nice, long, outer protective cover. So the way this one works, I don't have to guide it in carefully, which I like. I don't have to hold the paper taut with my fingers. I can just put it on and then 
just shut it. I also like that there's no tension on these adjacent tools. Uh, on the other models that I had made, there was some pressure on the adjacent tools, which I didn't like. But this one, because I cut off just a couple of inches on its length, doesn't, it doesn't have that problem. And the big problem, believe it or not, was this. It's the uh, pivot point of the pliers. That pushes over. It's not totally flat. Uh, and that pushes over into the adjacent paper. Uh, so having this new paper roll smaller is much better. And we have a nice protective outer sleeve, which is just made out of a drinking straw. You could make it just this length, but I decided, what the heck, I'll just make it the full length, cover the cyber tool up top too, because then you have a working straw. Straws can be useful in certain situations, like to uh, snort co uh, powders that are legal, or uh, to use this as a uh, blow uh, for uh, fire starting, a blow pipe, or to drink fluids, or to conduct siphoning machines when you're in a survival situation. Uh, but the the little ruler part is kind of the same as what you saw before. But now it's just a little over nine inches long but it's so much more functional this way. Uh, it both coils up quickly and easily. I think the paper is preserved a little better by not pre-rolling it around the Q-tip too. I think that was distressing the paper slightly. So you wrap it into a nice tight cylinder, and then you apply the outer protective sheath, which is gonna protect it from grime, dirt, moisture, uh, and keep it from unrolling because when you're using the cyber tool as a screwdriver uh, before the paper was just kind of rattling around uh, but now it stays put which I like and it's a protective uh, protective cover for it and it closes much nicer so that's the, the now design that I endorse I recommend making them like this So a side benefit of this new tool on my cyber tool, I never even realized uh, how useful these things can sometimes be. Uh, extension tubes, the way they work is if you have, especially useful for a long screw, uh, you can load it onto the screwdriver bit, extend this, and then you can hold this against the work. And without having to hold the screw, hopefully you can actually screw into the product. And this new extension on my cyber tool works that way. Let me show you. So here's the uh, new design that I think is my best, my final prototype. Uh, what you do is you extend it, of course. Uh, it's best to always be sure to rotate these in the same direction because you want to tighten the paper, never loosen the paper. So righty-tighty is how I've designed these. Anyway, as you see, it can act like a sleeve, just like that other product on that other uh, screwdriver. Different companies call these different names. Let's see, I'm looking over at my computer. They're sometimes called bit guide, bit sleeve, drive guides, drill bit sleeves. DeWalt and a bunch of other companies make them. So let's add a, one to my cyber tool. And this is kind of low light, so I'm going to turn on my light. This uh, Victorinox has a enhancement light, which is kind of cool. Let me show you how this works. So normally you have to hold the bit, but what if your hand was having to brace the work, for instance? You didn't have a free hand. This kind of gives you a free hand, so it makes your tool almost into a, a, a one-handed one -handed operation tool. So you screw like so. Should have used a, a, a clear straw. And voila! Uh, now normally it's just a, a kind of a friction deal, but this is kind of interesting. If you extend this up beyond the paper part, uh, it kind of acts like a spring. Is that interesting? So you could actually uh, 
have it spring back into position, which I think is kind of an interesting application. But that's not how I just used it. The way I just used it, it was using the full friction of the paper as well. And if you saw this and thought, wow, I need one of those, and I don't care about the tape measure, uh, if your straw slides on and off of the cyber tool too easily, you could just put an extra layer of uh, clear tape there. I, of course, want it to act as a tape measure, though, so... And I didn't realize how useful this little light can be on the uh, cyber light. But it really helps out seeing in dark, dark situations. Pretty cool, huh? So I showed the paperclip mod in one of my earlier videos. We now have a ruler mod. You can just tape it to the outside. I like to keep it on just the flat part to keep it very uh, smooth and accurate. Uh, good for measuring things as precisely as possible. Or if you have a cyber tool, you can actually roll it up uh, to use the cyber tool bar uh, to help dispense it and to help, help store it. Uh, or just use Victor's idea, which is to fold it up and pop it between a couple of tools on your knife. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. All you need is a printer to print these out. They're free. Uh, enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Oh, did any of you notice on this one? This orange thing? What is that? That's a fire kit. That's the upcoming video. So I was thinking, besides uh, the tape measure on your cyber tool, what are some other things you could store? You could store perhaps fishing line, uh, dental floss, which is an excellent form of cordage for an emergency situation, and <clears throat> having the protective sheath uh, keeps it clean, tidy, and so it uh, clicks onto the knife quickly and easily. This is an experimental design. I'm not sure how practical this is, but I thought I'd show it off anyway, this green one. Oh no, my last envelope. And it has a rip in the edge. What will I do? I'll seal it with some tape. How much tape will I need? Oh, not too bad. So this is my emergency tape dispenser built into my Swiss Army knife. I think this one is a deluxe tinker. Uh, here's how it works. Uh, all the other tools adjacent to it work fine. You can open them and close them. Uh, so there's no pressure. But this uh, middle part has, check it out, a little pull tab hidden on the bottom side. But you can flip that around at the top so that it's visible, like so. And now you have a tape dispenser. Check it out. So you could use that to dispense tape to fix an envelope. Now there are a few different ways that you can cut the tape. Uh, one is to open the blade or open the scissors, but here's the sexier way to do it. You open up the uh, knife blade. You hold the tape taut. Now you slice it like a guillotine. So that's my emergency tape dispenser. Pull this off. Now we have a free tape dispenser. Check this out. It rotates. So you, oh, and if you're wondering how did that rotate, uh, this one was built quite a bit differently than the other. Uh, at the very center is a, uh, a rotating sleeve made of tape. So this part can rotate around, uh, so it's not, you know, the, the sticky side is on the outside. So I built this, uh, and then I wrapped tape around it, and that's how you build it. And then you put the protective sleeve over it uh, to keep it tidy, and keep that tape gunk from getting on your pocket. 
Do you walk around with a couple of rolls of electrical tape in your pocket? Probably not. But with this knife, you do. You have two little supplies of tape you just spool around. And then to keep it tidy, you cover it with a straw. I plan on getting a clear straw so the color coding can be seen from the outside. But that keeps the tape from getting all gunky on the outside and keeps your pocket clean. I like how the neon straws make them much easier to see in low lighting. It's a great conversation starter because people have never seen these before. And of course in black light, boy do they pop. Look at that.